I was lucky enough to live through the second half of the 20th century during the formative years of molecular biology, from the double helix on learning how to clone and, and sequence genes. And I used to think that that period was the golden age, but I was wrong. That was just the foothills, that was just the warm up. This century, the 21st century, will be the century of biology and medicine. The Weizmann-Garvin collaboration is one of those rare opportunities where one plus one makes three. The Weizmann Institute is a place where basic research is being pursued in the highest level. It's the Weizmann Institute of Science. It's about great science that will answer deep questions. What is so wonderful about this collaboration is that you are taking an institution that has that basic research, but marrying it with an institution like the Garvin that has the capacity to bring it uh, to the bedside much faster. And this new Garvin Weizmann Centre is in a building where the first two floors are people with cancer coming in on a daily basis for their outpatient services. And so every single person as they come in and out to do their high powered computer research, they can't help but bump into people who are reminding them. This is what this is all about. It's hard to put into words how important it is in the modern world to collaborate strategically with gifted institutions and people. With the Weizmann and us, we, we have the whole package. Hey Peter, good morning, how are you doing? Hi Ida, I'm fine. Did you get the package I sent you? Yeah, we received and everything is in place. Everything was still frozen. It's, it's perfect and we're going to process it uh, tomorrow. There's this extraordinary synergy between being able to see the blueprint, which we're good at doing, and being able to see the blueprint in action, which is really what Ido and I must do better than anyone. Ido and I first met when he visited Garvin um, uh, last year. I saw the same excitement about the prospects of what single cell technology can do to many of the basic questions we had and they had as well. And it became very clear that some of the things that we were interested in, particularly tumors growing in bone, finding dormant cancer cells was an interest of Edo's as well. We kind of started brainstorming and thinking how we can do it together. The strengths are so complementary and enabled to do research that would not be feasible any other way. Well everyone believes the skeleton is this sort of dead inert tissue that just holds you up uh, but it's a living vibrant uh, organ and cancer cells can enter the vasculature and spread via the blood system. Once they've arrived there they into a so-called dormant state. These dormant stem cells are usually resistant to various treatments and they have then the capability, even if you eliminated all of the tumor, to, to regenerate the entire tumor. What we have here at Garvin is the ability to find these very rare dormant cells. What Edo brings is the ability to understand individual single cell genomics. What we're trying to do together is really use these very strong single cell approaches to characterize these stem cells and understand new ways to actually treat them. The key then will be to defining which ones, which of these genes are the most important and then developing new ways to target and kill those cells so we can eradicate them and cure these types of cancers. Together they generate something that you couldn't imagine before. In each of the different divisions, we have all sorts of good cross-disciplinary mechanisms. Those kinds of things are happening in immunology, in cancer, in obesity and diabetes. We and others are finding that diabetes and obesity are greatly contributed by alterations in, in how our microbes communicate with our body. By tweaking our nutrition, our diet, we are able to control our microbes in a way that would prevent important diseases. I thought, wow, this is exactly what we need. We need to work together to be able to personalize nutrition in people. And I think it's a really essential component to be able to move to the next step, and that is to uh, prescribe individual uh, diets and medications to individuals based on that underlying blueprint. a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of drive to remove the barriers from these types of collaboration. 
Well, video conferencing makes it easy, so you can actually talk with colleagues from anywhere. But it, it goes much beyond that. The idea is to exchange technologies, to exchange people, and fertilizing one another with new ideas and new technologies. The progress that we are making is so rapid and so great that therapeutic applications are being developed as we speak and may reach the bedside sooner than uh, you may think. The effort that is being put at Garvan is uh, unique globally. Passion. I think that's the one word that they're passionate about what they do. You have a lot of incredibly bright people who could pursue a career practicing medicine, but they've chosen to come to these two institutes for the same reason that philanthropy has chosen to support these two institutes. They can see that this genome sequencing is is changing everything for the future, for the better. It's not often that you get the opportunity to recognise a potential one plus one equals three uh, situation. I think too often in science you meet people who say no or say, oh, I don't believe it or, you know, it's not possible. The really good ones say, that's interesting, tell me more. What can we do? Is it difficult? It's very difficult. Is it possible? It is really possible. And this is exactly what we're, we're doing today. I'm always amazed by the phenomenon that, that the whole ends up being so much greater than the sum of the parts. You put your heads together, put your resources together, you don't change the world. I don't just think it's desirable, I think it's essential. Hey, good morning, Peter. Good night, Edo.